Chapter Thirty of Arizona Nights by Stephen Edward White. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Discovery. Senior Buck Johnson looked quickly back toward the home ranch, his heart glad at this fortunate solution of his annoyance. The home ranch lay in plain sight, not ten miles away. As Senior Johnson idly watched it shimmering in the heat, a tiny figure detached itself from the mass and launched itself in his direction. Wonder what's eating him? Marvelled Senior Johnson. And who is it? The figure drew steadily nearer. In half an hour it had approached near enough to be recognized. "'Why, it's Jed!' cried the senor and spurred his horse. "'What do you mean riding out with that foot?' he demanded sternly when within hailing distance. "'Foot hell!' gasped Parker, whirling his horse alongside. "'Your wife's run away with Brent Palmer.' For fully ten seconds not the faintest indication proved that the husband had heard, except that he lifted his bridle hand, and the well-trained pony stopped. "'What did you say?' he asked finally. "'Your wife's run away with Brent Palmer,' repeated Jed, almost with impatience. Again the long pause. "'How do you know?' asked Senior Johnson then. "'No, hell, it's been going on for a month. Sang saw them drive off. They took the buckboard. He heard him planning it. He was too scared to tell till they'd gone. I just found it out. They've been gone two hours. Must be going to make the limited.' Parker fidgeted, impatient to be off. "'You're wasting time,' he snapped at the motionless figure. Suddenly Johnson's face flamed. He reached from his saddle to clutch Jed's shoulder, nearly pulling the foreman from his pony. "'You lie!' he cried. "'You're lying to me! It ain't so!' Parker made no effort to extricate himself from the painful grasp. His cool eyes met the blazing eyes of his chief. "'I wished I did lie, Buck,' he said sadly. "'I wished it wasn't so. But it is.' Johnson's head snapped back to the front with a groan. The pony snorted as the steel bit his flanks, leaped forward and with head outstretched, nostrils wide, the wicked white of the bronco flickering in the corner of his eye, struck the bee-line for the home ranch. Jed followed as fast as he was able. On his arrival he found his chief raging about the house like a wild beast. Sing trembled from a quick and stormy interrogatory in the kitchen. Chairs had been upset and let lie. Estrella's belongings had been tumbled over. Senior Johnson there found only too sure proof in the various lacks of a premeditated and permanent flight. Still he hoped, and as long as he hoped he doubted, and the demons of doubt tore him to a frenzy. Jed stood near the door, his arms folded, his weight shifted to a sound foot, waiting and wondering what the next move was to be. Finally, Senior Johnson, struck with a new idea, ran to his desk to rummage in a pigeonhole, but he found no need to do so, for lying on the desk was what he sought, the checkbook from which Estrella was to draw on Goodrich for the money she might need. He fairly snatched it open. Two of the checks had been torn out, stub and all and then his eye caught a crumpled bit of blue paper under the edge of the desk. He smoothed it out. The check was made out to bear and signed Estrella Johnson. It called for fifteen thousand dollars. Across the middle was a great ink blot, reason for its rejection. At once Senior Johnson became singularly and dangerously cool. I reckon you're right, Jed, he cried in his natural voice. She's gone with him. She's got all her traps with her, and she's drawn on Goodrich for fifteen thousand and she never thought of going just this time of month when the miners are in with her dust, and Goodrich would be sure to have that much. That's friend, Palmer. Been going on a month, you say. I couldn't say anything, Buck, said Parker anxiously. A man's never sure enough about them things till afterwards. I know, agreed Buck Johnson. Give me a light for my cigarette. He puffed for a moment, then rose, stretching his legs. In a moment he returned from the other room. The old shiny Colts forty-five strapped loosely on his hip. Jed looked him in the face with some anxiety. The foreman was not deceived by the man's easy manner. In fact, he knew it to be symptomatic of one of the dangerous phases of Senior Johnson's character. "'What's up, Buck?' he inquired. "'Just going out for a passier with the little horse, Jed. "'I suppose I'd better come along. "'Not with your lame foot, Jed.' The tone of voice was conclusive. Jed cleared his throat. "'She left this for you,' said he, proffering an envelope. Them kind always writes. Sure, agreed Senior Johnson, stuffing the letter carelessly into his side pocket. He half drew the colt from its holster and slipped it back again. Makes you feel plumb like a man to have one of these things rubbing against you again, he observed irrelevantly. Then he went out, leaving the foreman leaning, chair tilted, against the wall. This is the end of chapter 30.